Hey Bullfroggers, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'll show you how I made a router sled flattening system for tree cookies that can also be used to flatten and true the ends of my Fred Flintstone drum kit. A couple years ago, I found this perfectly hollow log on my property. So I cut it into pieces and set it in the barn to dry. All I need to do now is flatten the ends so that they're parallel to each other and as close to perpendicular to the log as possible so the logs will sit perfectly straight. But I also want to use my flattening system on these awesome elm cookies that I have as well. I'm not sure how well you can see this on the camera with the lighting, but I've already taken an angle grinder with a sanding disc to the inside of the logs to get rid of all that dried out loose material. They actually look pretty cool. Here's a better look. Well, I just finished building my hollow log slash tree cookie flattening system, and here it is in all its glory. I started by building the rails out of three eight-foot two-by-fours. First, I jointed and ripped the rounded corners off. Then I cut some slots in the upright pieces, and then I connected everything together with two and a half inch pocket screws. Love my Craig jig. On to the sled. A while back I found these beautiful aluminum angles at the scrapyard when I was dropping off my soda cans. So I bought them for literally pennies on the dollar. I had no idea what I was going to use them for, but I knew I would find something down the road. All my fellow pack rats, if you know, you know. These two end pieces act as cleats to keep the sled from falling off the rails, and they maintain an inside space of about a quarter inch wider than my router base. I drilled 7 16th holes in my workbench frame to accept 3 8 threaded inserts on the back side of the frame. I made these knobs using my knob jig and 4 inch long 3 8 bolts epoxied into the knobs. By the way, if you want to see my knob making jig in process, let me know in the comment comments. I think it's pretty slick. I mounted the rails in their highest position and measured from the table to the bottom of the router bit which is also at its highest position without cutting into the router base. I got 31 inches. Don't know if you can see that on the camera. Then I measured and marked 31 inches up from the table and marked a spot. This is my zero point. The log I'm going to cut today is about 17 and a quarter at its highest point. So I measured down from zero and placed the mark at 17 and a quarter on each of the four uprights. Then I clamp these blocks exactly on that mark. Now that'll make it real easy for me to drop this thing down till these bottoms of this will rest on the table and I'll have all four uprights exactly at the same level. I put some shins under the rough end of the log to give it some stability and to get that thing as close to square as it's gonna be. Of course, it won't ever be perfect, but that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Then I toss some sandbags against the base of the log for some added stability. Last thing is I put some packing tape across the top of the rails and gave that a good coat of wax. Same with the inside of this, the sled, the bottom of the router base, and a little bit even underneath here, the part that rides on here. Now she slides nice and smooth. Let's take it for a ride. After a little experimentation, I've settled on this cutting pattern. This gives me the best combination of avoiding climb cuts and cutting towards the inside of the log to preserve the bark. I'm afraid if I cut towards the outside, the bark will get ripped off. Uh, 1 8 inch depth of cut works well with this large diameter router bit I'm using.
So here in a minute, you're going to see me get a little tiny bit of a kickback or a climb cut or something, and it actually jarred the log enough that it, it kind of threw it off a little bit. So I end up having to go over the entire log again at that same depth setting. Um, but there's a little swirly, a little tiny knot or swirly grain in that spot, and I guess I took too deep of a cut or somehow got a climb cut or something. But um, after I went back over the whole thing, it was totally fine. Once you've maxed out your router bit's depth, you can drop the whole uh, assembly, pull this out, get rid of your gun, drop a little spacer in there, put this back on. Then undo the knobs and gently drop that down. Works like a champ. Okay, top and bottom of the log are both flat, and so I've set this on my table saw, the flattest object in my shop, and we're going to see how close they are to being parallel. Let's get a measurement here. 16 exactly. 16 and a teen. Sixteen minus a teenth. And 16 and a teenth. I'd say 16 inch tolerance is plenty close enough to for my purposes. So I'm really happy with this jig. I got about, let's see, four more logs to flatten. And I got some ideas what I'm going to do with them. Stay tuned for uh, future videos. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for checking in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time at Bullfrog Pond Shop.